Hello, hello. I'm Jessalyn and I'm excited to share some advanced tips for the network panel today. If you are new to this tool, be sure to check out our beginner video. But for those ready to level up, let's dive into how you can customize this powerful tool for deeper analysis. Look at this big timeline overview. Together with the waterfall column, they are very useful for pinpointing and inspecting resource loading sequences. Hover over a waterfall to see a full timing breakdown. The green portion represents the browser's wait time for first byte of a response. The blue portion starts when the browser begins reading the response body. We will use this information in a bit for further debugging. These lines are important for checking if resources start loading at the expected time. For example, the DOM content loaded happens after the JavaScript file is loaded. In our case, this shouldn't happen. The DOM shouldn't wait for the entire JavaScript content. Due to this delay, this JSON request started late as well. Let's check the code to see if we can improve this. Ah, I see. This script in the head section is blocking HTML rendering. Let's edit it to async and defer its execution. You can edit your code directly or overwrite it with DevTools. Watch this video to learn more. All right, save it and reload the page. There you go. Now our DOM content loads much earlier. It's a chain effect, which also improves the speed of the JSON file. In real-world scenarios, you probably have hundreds of requests on a page. This waterfall can be your starting point for performance analysis. For an even deeper performance dive, use the performance panel. Personally, I like to color code the waterfall by resource type. There is a global setting for that. Enable it and you get a more colorful waterfall. Actually, we don't always need the overview and it takes up space we can hide it in the settings. Click on the panel settings button and uncheck overview to hide it. While we are here, let's briefly discuss these settings. DevTools can capture film strips to help you visualize the timeline. If your page has multiple iframes, you can group requests by frame. This makes it easier to inspect them in groups. The last request rows is helpful. It shows additional information for certain columns, like the status name. Sometimes, you click a button or hyperlink, and it opens a new tab. You might want to capture the full network activity of the new tab, but you can't open DevTools in time. To demonstrate, I will click this link to open a new tab. DevTools can only capture the network when it's open, so there's no activity here. You can enable the global setting to automatically open DevTools for pop-ups. Click the link again and there you go. Full network activity is captured. By the way, you can use the network conditions panel to change the user agent and client hints. This is handy for testing pages that use them to adjust the logic and UI. You can also disable specific content and codings to see the performance impact. For example, without encoding, the data transferred over the network is much larger. The Disable Cache option can slow down your page. If you disable it and reload, the data transferred is much smaller because many requests are cached. If you want to learn more about different types of caches and how the Disable Cache button works, watch this video. Here is a bonus tip. There are two ways to view the initiators and dependencies of a network request. In the network panel, hold down the shift key while hovering over a resource. It will show the request initiator in green and any dependencies in red. Alternatively, you can view the request chain in the initiator tab as a nested list. The current request is in bold. These features help you understand why a resource was requested or what network activity it costs. All right, that's all for today. You can find all the links below to learn more about the network panel. Good luck debugging, everyone. See you in the next DevTools tip. Ciao!